Okay. Against better judgment, I'll try this one last time. This time with no sarcasm, no parody, no humor whatsoever, since Jerry White has no appreciation at all for that sort of thing. First, I don't know where Jerry got the idea that I said that he said that Tidbin Bella was not NASA's facility. I didn't say that anywhere in my critique of his Exhibit D series. What I said was that when Jarrah lists the three NASA Deep Space Network stations located near the cities of Goldstone, Canberra, and Madrid, he doesn't mention the city Canberra, but substitutes the country Australia in its place. As I pointed out quite clearly in Exhibit D, the tracking stations in Goldstone, Australia, and also Madrid are all owned by NASA and therefore are not independent parties as the propagandists have claimed. Whether it was just Australia or Goldstone, Madrid and Australia tracking the signals, it's immaterial. All are NASA facilities. Although Canberra is in Australia, you can't use Australia in the statement without changing its meaning. I assume that Jared changes the wording so that he can include all Australia's radio telescopes, especially parks, in this list of NASA-owned facilities. Loosely, I refer to the Australian tracking stations as one, because they were all working together on the same project. Only the two stations near Canberra were part of NASA's Deep Space Network. These were the NASA-owned stations at Tinbin Bella and Honeysuckle Creek. The other NASA-owned facilities in Australia are part of NASA's Manned Space Flight Network, which is actually a larger collection of tracking stations. Parks was an honorary member of NASA's manned space flight network. It had to be in order to send information over their hub. But Parks was not owned by NASA, nor was it operated by NASA during the Apollo days. Jera can point to statements on the Parks and Honeysuckle Creek websites saying that Robert Taylor was in charge of NASA operations at Parks during the Apollo 11 mission but that does not imply that NASA employees were in control of all operations at Parks at that time. And while he can point to a statement that Parks was supported by Tidman Bella staff during subsequent Apollo missions, but not including Apollo 13, he failed to notice that the support staff was composed of CSIRO employees who were working on contract for NASA. Not only was Parks part of the NASA manned spaceflight network, NASA's Robert Taylor was in charge of the operations during the Apollo days and controlled all the data that Parks relayed to the network. Webb completely ignored this in his critique. Hard to imagine why. Having personally worked as a regular salaried employee, a contract employee, and as a consultant, I can assure you that these three forms of employment are not even remotely the same thing. Since Jarrah and I can sit here all day and rattle off all sorts of statements found on these websites that the other fails to acknowledge, I suggest that you go to the Parks and Honeysuckle Creek websites and read for yourself. Links to these websites are in the description to this video as well as my previous videos. Please, read the story of Parks' involvement in the Apollo mission and judge for yourself what the true story is. Which statements are consistent with that story and which statements are being taken out of context to support a dubious claim? Read. Think. Use your own power of reasoning and the truth will be obvious. So, if there was only one radio telescope in the world receiving these videos, then how could one verify whether the moonwalk videos were actually coming from space? or from pre-filmed tapes that the Parks Observatory was relaying to the world. As for the Tedere claim, I went back and looked and nowhere in my Tedere video did I say that Jarrah supported Sebro's claim. By the time I got around to making that video and thought that I understood Jarrah's position, I finally concluded that Jarrah was simply quote mining statements made by Windley and Brannig. I did discuss Sebro's claim thoroughly because it parroted an earlier claim made by Casing that satellites were used to fool amateur radio operators, a claim that Jarrah does endorse. But, as Jarrah was quick to point out, I did make a mistake on my first run-through and misrepresented his claim in my list of Jarrah's 32 claims. 
Somehow, I got the impression that Jerry was talking about Tetere before I published the introductory video to my critique. Now that I finally understand what he was talking about, I admit this was an error on my part, and I have since gone back and annotated all my videos where I showed his list of claims, and corrected them so that they now say Jarrah claimed that MCC was fooled by simulated data. By the way, since I'm avoiding sarcasm in this video, it's killing me not to say something about my inability to figure out what Jarrah actually claimed in my first pass through his videos as being the only mistake that Jarrah has actually been able to catch me make. Yeah, it's killing me. And finally, as for the observation I made on the Frank Byrne interview, it seems that Jerry himself has done a magnificent job of backtracking or saving face by suggesting that it was Raynan's prerogative to use either the shotgun mic on his camera or the lav mic pinned to Frank's chest. I think the fact that Raynan pinned lav mics to more than 15 victims, including Frank, and used them on the others, and the fact that the sound level didn't change while the camera was moving, but only after it arrived at the end of its travel, goes a long way to indicating whether Frank's lav mic was being used or not. Well, this was one of the antennas that we received. So I need to date it from the spacecraft. You decide. Oh, and what would Frank have said besides, we received telemetry data from the moon? Well, how about, we received voice, TV, and telemetry data, which they separated, and sent the data portion to MCC. Again, this observation about Raynan's video doesn't have anything to do with any of Jarrah's claims. <sighs> Avoiding sarcasm is killing me. That's it. My last word on these subjects. Jarrah can come back with whatever response he deems necessary to further save face. I'm moving on. Ciao, moon hoax conspirators wherever you are.